What's going on? Death Curse Society back on the air with another edition of the Slash Report. This week, we take down episode two of Creep Show, the new series on Shudder. So let's get into it. First up is Bad Wolf Down, written and directed by Rob Schrab and starring the iconic Jeffrey Combs. It's Nazis and werewolves. There aren't many things in this world that go together better. Mm, peanut butter and chocolate. Peas and carrots. Exactly. This episode opens with a huge firefight between the Nazis and Americans on foreign soil. The American platoon gets destroyed, decimated. Four of the soldiers escape and make it to an abandoned jail out in the middle of the woods. They're plotting a way to get back home when they realize that there'd been some kind of fight within the jail. There's blood everywhere and scrapes and destruction, making everybody uneasy. One of the younger soldiers is praying next to the jail cell when he's grabbed from behind by the face. He turns and fires only to find that he had shot a woman and she's in bad shape, great pain and screaming loudly enough to alert any Nazis that could be patrolling the area. While all this is going on, we meet Jeffrey Combs, a high ranking Nazi official who has discovered that his own son has been killed by the Americans and he vows revenge. Back at the jail, The soldiers realize they need to help her, but they can't get in the jail because they can't find the keys. Until one of them notices that the keys are in the jail with the girl. They get the keys out. One of the soldiers just wants to shoot the woman to end her screaming so their position isn't given away. But he's talked out of it by the rest of the platoon, and they go into the cell to help the woman. It turns out she's French, and she locked herself in the cage to protect everybody else from what she is. And she's begging for death. She wants to die. She wants them to take her out and let her die. They don't really understand why. The one soldier who wanted to put the bullet in her head to shut her up decides he can no longer trust his platoon, locks him in the cell with the woman, and leaves. As they're trying to figure out a way to get out of the cell, Jeffrey Combs arrives with a whole bunch of Nazis and surrounds the jail. Informs them that he knows that they killed his son. If they give themselves up, he'll kill them quickly and quietly. But if he has to go in and risk German soldiers, the death will be long and painful. Left with no other choice, the soldiers decide they will help the woman and kill her. But first, she must bite them so they have a chance to fight off the Nazis once they break in. She agrees and bites the men. They give her a silver cross that she ingests and ends her life. And then they wait. They wait. Night falls. The moon rises. And as the Nazis are breaking in, the Americans wolf out. And it's kind of cool. They do it creep show style, like in a comic book way, panel to panel to panel, change, 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 and then back to the live action with the real werewolf in there. Now, the werewolves look a little bit cheesy. I think it's kind of a tribute back to the howling, maybe uh, Silver Bullet. The one kind of looks like the Hammer films, uh, Curse of the Werewolf. Not too bad, not too bad. I mean, it's it's supposed to be cheesy and campy, and it is, but it's still very, very entertaining. As the Nazis break in, the werewolves just tear them apart. Jeffrey Combs takes a horrible demise. It's wonderful. And then we catch up with the soldier who abandoned his troops. He's running across the field, and then you see just, boom, an explosion off on the side, and some legs and arms go flying. And there he is all sprawled out on the ground, missing an arm, missing a leg, holes all in him. And one of the soldiers finally catch up to him once he wakes up and he's begging for help. The soldier kind of flashes his fangs and says, war changes a man. Just kind of like the way the the guy left him in the jail cell. He said something similar to the same thing. So very good episode. Pretty good. It is cheesy, as I said, and a little campy. But hey, this is creep show. That's what we're going to get. It did look pretty good. And the gore was... Top notch. Check out Bad Wolf Down. I think you'll dig it. The second episode of the night was called The Finger. Not that finger. It's just the name of the episode. Just Directed by showrunner Greg Nicotero and starring DJ Qualls, probably best known for Hustle and Flow, The New Guy, The Core. On TV, he was in Breaking Bad and Scrubs and Supernatural and The Big Bang Theory. But what I always remember him for is his role in Road Trip, especially this scene. Excuse me, but this has powdered sugar on it, and I ordered no sugar. I really can't have too much sugar in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at that. You're absolutely right. I'll tell you what. Let me take this back and bring out a new piece. All right, great. Care pretty good? Mm -hmm. Okay, great.
All right, then, let me warm that up for you. Thank you. All right, there you go. Thanks. Excuse me. And uh, the French toast will be up in just a minute. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. French toast, no sugar. All right? Sorry about that. Oh, no I problem. Apologize. Thank you. No problem. No problem. It's good. I just got to where French toast was appetizing again. Anyway... Clark Wilson, played by DJ Qualls here, is a deadbeat loser, just go-nowhere guy, just unmotivated, a loser, just a plain loser. He loses his wife, you know, he, he's a web designer sometimes when he has needs to work. He breaks the fourth wall all the time. He'll start giving you a narrative of who he is and what he's doing, but it's terrible how he does it, which makes it more fascinating. You got to see this. He's a bit of a hoarder, a collector of objects, things people discard, and he finds a finger. A finger. Accidentally spills some beer on it and sees that it absorbs and gets bigger. So he starts to nurture it, give it water and stuff, puts it in a freezer, and it starts to grow. It turns into a little being, kind of like halfway between a xenomorph and pumpkin head. That's what it looks like. About so tall, you know, three feet tall. And Clark likes what he lovingly names the beast, Bob. And Bob does things for Clark, what he thinks will help him. It seems to like him. It likes Clark. So Clark gets calls from a debt collector. And then Bob comes and takes care of it, leading up to his ex-wife's disappearance and the stepchildren. The cops are coming and asking questions. And we're starting to learn as it's going on that uh, Clark isn't really that tuned in to what the hell is going on in reality. The episode ends with a slow shot panning away from Clark, telling us that he told us that we weren't going to believe his story, and he is in a padded room now. There is no Bob doing the killings. It was Clark doing the killings. But they do keep shooting the window, almost like you're waiting for Bob to show up again, because he loves Clark, and Clark loves Bob. It's The Finger, probably the most interesting episode to date out of the four we've seen for Creepshow so far. Uh, Greg Nicotero, nice job. And DJ Qualls is, is captivating playing this ridiculous loser who is clearly insane. I found both of these episodes this week more enjoyable than the two from last week. Now let's hope that they build on this and they only get better from here. We still got one from Tom Savini coming, I, I'm looking forward to, so it can only go up from here. And let's hope it does. We got another Slash Report coming at you in a couple days when The Walking Dead kicks off Season 10. So tune in for that. We'll keep you up to date on it. The Death Curse Society, new shows every other Thursday right on YouTube. Like, subscribe, share, and we'll keep bringing you the best commentary in horror. Until then, ZigZag and the DCS, out. Woo!